Hi, here we are in the uh, poolside area of uh, Moosehaw Heritage Inn, talking right after the uh, Citizen and Group of the Year Awards. And uh, as it's becoming a bit of a tradition with us, we're talking to the uh, uh, recipients of the awards this year. And the first group is Kids Helping Kids. Jessica Freilich. Hi. And Casey Ebel. Hi. I got it right. <laughs> so they are, uh, of course, their main interest in life other than school and family is dance. These are dancers. And they uh, both are at Barb Jackman's uh, BJ, Dance Images by BJ uh, Studio. But they uh, gained this award recognition because it's the kids that did the effort and the work to make this happen. So tell me about the project, Jessica. Yeah, so uh, kind of at the beginning of the year, around October, I went to Miss Barb with this idea, and it kind of stemmed from, you know, you hear now and then about kids who can't dance because they can't afford it, and I dance so often, and I know uh, that it's, you know, very expensive for my parents, but they do it because they know how much I love it and how much I benefit from it. And, uh, you know, I've said lots how if my parents t came to me one day and said, you know, we can't afford for you to dance, I would say, that's okay, just use my food money. So uh, it's, it's really dear to me. Uh, and when I heard, you know, of kids who can't do it just because they can't afford it, I thought, man, like, that sucks. So I went to Miss Bar with this idea, but, like, can we do, like, a fundraiser or something? Um, to raise money for this issue and I know that there were kids at our studio who use uh, a foundation called Creative Kids as well as lots of kids in Moose Jaw who use it and they give money to kids all over Saskatchewan to get involved with dancing and music and art and learn their cultural language, anything sort of creative. Uh, so we kind of decided that we wanted to donate our money to them and then uh, I thought like it would be really beneficial if we could have the older dancers come up with their own class plan and make up their own choreography and teach the younger dancers because then they learn the value and how much hard work it is for our teachers to have to come up with a new plan every day as well as it's really great for them to kind of get to experiment with that creative aspect because usually we don't get to choreograph for ourselves. Uh, so I talked to Miss Barb first and she was game for it. She thought it was a good idea even though it was a really busy time of year and then we went to my group and one group younger than us at the studio and said we want to put this on together for all the kids that are studio and what was I'm just so proud of is that everyone was so excited and everyone just said yes without even hesitating. Well, right, that's for sure. Casey how long have you been dancing? I've been dancing actually since I was three years old so quite a while. More than five times your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's been a while and I just love it so much and like Jessica said in her acceptance speech we're all just so close-knit and it's like a family there so just to be able to give even a few kids the opportunity to feel that sense of belonging is just so amazing, I think. Well, I talked to Miss Barbara and she said that the result of your fundraising is going to allow 30 kids to, be, uh, to take dancing for a year. Mm -hmm. I think that's so great and just like I know how much I'm there and how much it means to me. So to be able to give somebody that gift is... I think it's really special. I, w I wouldn't know what I would do without dance, so. Now, uh, what's your favorite kind of dance? I would have to say tap. Really? Yes, I oh, think Ms. so. Miss Barb would like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, she would. <laughs> she does. Yeah. But what other ones do you take besides, because the dance has got, it's not just dance uh, class. You have um, tap and ballet. Mm -hmm. I take tap, jazz, ballet, contemporary, musical theater, and point. But there is also hip hop at our studio and acro. And you guys, of course, uh, you do, there's a lot of kids in the schools. And, and, and Moose Jaw is not just one dance studio, because there are many dance studios who have a lot of opportunities for young people to dance. And it's mm -hmm. a really, a really special thing, because obviously, uh, we host a couple of dance uh, festivals here. Yes. Uh, there's, there's the carnival, and there's also the Moose Jaw uh, Dance Festival, it's called? Yes. Yeah, and you get to participate in those, and you go to other places too. Yes, and I love competition season. It's so much fun. Yeah. You just get to dance the whole weekend and be with your friends, and it's a great time. So the fact that more kids get to experience that now is, I'm so excited. Well, well done. And now, 
How many people were involved, Jessica, your, your age group and another age group? How many would that be total? Uh, yeah, so a rough estimate. I think there were just over about 100 people from our studio that participated in the whole event, and there were 30 teens who put it on from our studio. So that's mine and Casey's group, and then another group, one younger than us. Um, we're actually planning to go to Red Deer, Alberta come spring to do a competition, and we're going on a bus trip with the teachers for a week. So it was a nice way for us to get to bond as a group because we are two separate groups uh, to get to bond and get to know each other and kind of knit even tighter for that bus trip and this was a great way to do that. If dance gives you lots of opportunities of course it doesn't necessarily be going to be your dancer for life but uh, what kind of things has this given you that you'll use uh, in your world ahead? Um, I think just the, the confidence and uh, definitely the work ethic. Uh, no one has ever pushed me harder in my life than Miss Barb has <laughs> and you know the other teachers at our studio and I think um, just being able to love something and have a place other than your home that feels so you feel so comfortable to um, be yourself and to just kind of try and expand and try new things uh, so it's really just given me confidence and self-awareness and then this opportunity as well um, because it was kind of a self-made fundraiser um, you know I've put on smaller fundraisers here and there for different things in Musha but I've never put on one this big so even though it was kids helping kids to have that adult watching over you and get their advice and have them to kind of guide you I think that was really beneficial for us because a lot of the things that I learned from parents who I talked to and their opinions and Miss Barb's opinions I'll be able to take when I do other volunteer things and other fundraisers. The fundraiser we met last year was the big Great Canadian Bake Off that you were involved with. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, um, it was uh, for the CHAB Radiothon. Um, I would remember driving to school every morning and hear Craig on the radio saying, you know, like, oh, if you've got any fundraiser ideas, like, let us know. And I was kind of thinking about a week after, like, well, why aren't they, why aren't they advertising any fundraisers? Like, why isn't anyone fundraising? And then I'm like, oh, maybe I should. And uh, <laughs> it was going towards the hospital. So me and my good friend Kenzie uh, have been volunteering volunteering there for years uh, it's we really enjoy doing it so it was something that we thought well this is a cause that we're uh, really passionate about we enjoy volunteering at the hospital we should fundraise for it uh, so I talked to the lady at the hospital who's in charge of the volunteer services and again she was really helpful in getting us set up and helping us um, know what to do and then when I got in touch with Craig he was really helpful and uh, inspiring and really pushed us along and got us going and then we did a bake sale and I think we raised just over seven hundred dollars to donate um, for the the kids um, and you're on the, and you serve and this is probably a good training for uh, other awards along, but also be, becoming a responsible citizen you serve on the youth advisory committee to city council and uh, one of the secretaries for that organization and so that's a, you know, it's been a busy day for you. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten to school so far yet, so that's a win. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think my favorite part is just, uh, you know, volunteers and like people who do this, they're so similar to each other. And when you put them all in a room together, great things happen. So I find the more I volunteer and the more organizations I'm a part of, the more awesome people that I meet and, you know, hearing their ideas and getting their perspective, it just all in all makes me a better person. <laughs> Do you agree, Casey? I definitely yeah. agree, and I volunteer with Jessica at the hospital, and I know how much we both love that, and it's just, it's really good to be able to give back to the community, and I know, like, I wouldn't, I don't think I would have started if it weren't for the Vanier Practicum program, but now that I have, like, I know I don't just do the minimum hours, like, you, you keep yeah. going back because you feel great to be able to interact with the people and see how you're helping and it's really great I think. What other things do you do besides like I talked about her and her big sound right. stuff. What about you? I volunteer at the hospital every week and I also volunteer at the multicultural center. I tutor an English class uh, every week for two hours and so I really love it there and I get to develop a personal relationship with the with the students there and it's a lot of fun because week after week it's the same people and we get to know each other and it's really great to develop those relationships in the community. Yeah, for sure, because you know, then you have, it, when you go out and, and for those people who you're working with, they look up to you and say, ooh, and then when you <laughs> go out and, and they meet you and they, they talk and it gives them a kind of a, a, a foothold into society. Yeah, and I think that's great. And they're all such good people and they just want to get out there. So I'm always willing to help them if they, 
if they ever wanted to do anything with me or needed me to help because they're all so good to me at the at the class so well great now so we're just uh, wrapping up our our award that uh, Jessica has here and it's uh, again the uh, group of the year for the Moose Chamber of Commerce Award so we've got about a minute left you, you can have 30 seconds and Casey can have 30 seconds so anything you want to say um, well, one thing that I think is important for any kids who are watching to hear, uh, I told Scott from the Moose Jaw Express this, uh, he kind of asked about, you know, being youth and how that helps, and I said, it's kind of bittersweet because I realize this the older I get, how youth have an impact and uh, how it's, you know, when you speak, people really do listen and hear your voice because you're not just another adult. Um, you know, they, they think it's really important when you make a comment. Uh, but at the same time, it kind of sucks because I realize this as I'm getting older and older. So I'm just trying to make the most of it while I'm still young and no, people you're are so like old. to listen. You're, just, you're aging I'm as a university next year. And what about you? I was just so happy with everyone that participated. And I know Jess and I were both so proud at the turnout at our studio and how many businesses donated and all the parents. And I know even one dancer at our studio raised like $800. So it was just amazing to see how much everyone stepped up and really helped us with this idea and this program, so it's great. Okay. Well, congratulations, ladies. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk to Moose Jaws 2013 Citizen of the Year. Don't go away.